welcome to today's podcast interview. I am interviewing a friend, a client, and actually I, I work with her on the thing I'm going to share with you today. And that's why I'm bringing her on, Patty Lustig. Patty is a healer and a practitioner and a coach, and she has so much experience in helping people have more ease in their lives. And frankly, the way that she does it is so easeful herself, and it has created just like breathing room in my own life. So I wanted to bring her on today to share with you this healing modality that she is an expert in called Psych K, but I'm not going to tell you about it. I'm going to let Patty tell you about it. So Patty, thank you for being here to help us talk about making things more easeful in our lives. You are welcome. <laughs> you know, I love I love talking to you. Every time Patty and I talk, we could talk for a long time. Patty, can you talk first of all about your business and who you serve? Absolutely. I tend mostly to serve women who are about 50 or older, although it's not exclusive to that, but that's sort of the woman that I attract. I'm personally 68 years old, so I've been through a lot of the things that people go through from their 40s on, like divorce, illness, recovery. Menopause. Menopause, recovering from past traumas, dealing with weight issues all those kinds of things, raising a child of divorce. I've been through so many things. It's easy for me to relate and also provide some of my own uh, resources and information or experience to people. So that's the woman I work with. And usually it's a woman who's quite successful in her life. Many women I've worked with have PhDs. They're highly successful in their lives, yet they have perhaps some underlying trauma that is still influencing on them. And through this process called Psych K, I'm often able to have them release that trauma in a way they've never experienced before. So they're kind of, they've been successful in spite of this old thing that's holding them back. And do you, I'm just curious, do you think that it, at the age of 40 or 50, People kind of just get sick of their own bullshit and they're just like, I am ready to release this. Is that, do you think that's like why people are drawn to you at that age? I'd say that's a piece of it, mm -hmm. especially the older that you get. You're mm -hmm. sick of dealing with this over and over. I think in your 40s, you might be going through something and you just don't know how to move through it quickly or easily or effectively. Maybe you think you're going to be stuck, even though you've... Uh, say, gotten a divorce, but now you're still raising children. You have to deal with the jerk you divorce. <laughs> and it's it can be very, very difficult, very stressful. And then anything you have from your past that can come in as well can just make your life, you know, I remember periods in my life that felt like hell to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like you have your this parachute on your back or this backpack that's filled with rocks and it's just like making you sludge through life. Yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted to have you on because I love to use my platform for people who are struggling and want to make things just like a little bit easier, even a smidge easier. So that's really why I wanted you to talk. And I always refer to you as my healer. Do, mm -hmm. do you think of yourself as a healer? I think what I do does help people heal. Mm -hmm. I've never really thought of myself as a healer. Um, <laughs> however, I do see people healing with mm -hmm. the work that I do with them. And often people come to me having done hundreds, I don't know the hundreds, but many other things to attempt to deal with this, this issue or that issue. And yet it's still impacting them in a negative way. And then for whatever reason, we do our work together and they would say things have lifted off of them. Yeah. It's like, oh, like, a, like I breathe a sigh when we're done yeah. with our sessions. So let's, let's get into talking about what Psych K is. Can you give us the, the layman's overview of it? Yeah. It's basically based in consciousness. So everyone knows we have a conscious mind. That's what you and I are dealing with right now then I think most people understand that we have a subconscious mind and the subconscious mind stores things like we don't have to think about how to breathe. That's just in our subconscious. It's just happening. There's many, many other things. You know, you learn to drive a car. You don't have to relearn it. That just lives in your subconscious. 
scientifically, they say that the first seven years of a child's life, mostly they're simply recording into the subconscious mind all kinds of things that are helpful and useful to them. The problem is they're also recording all of the culture around them, the belief structures around them, things happen to them that are negative and they make decisions about themselves, which become beliefs. I'm not worthy. I'm not lovable. Then they forget that all that is there. We go on with our adult life and we find that certain areas of our lives, we can't move forward in no matter what we do. Maybe it's on the surface. I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight, but the person can never take the weight off and keep it off. Maybe it's, I want a relationship. I want a relationship just never happens for that person or they're always picking the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Many things like that, areas of our life. Those areas where we're consciously saying, I want this, but it doesn't happen. What we say is there's a limiting belief on the subconscious level. I don't know why I think of it conscious, subconscious. Uh uh (laughs) It's really accurate, but just sort of how it feels to me. Mm -hmm. And in Psyche, what we're doing is something called balancing. In other words, if a person says, I'm worthy, but we have a way of testing whether that's actually feeling true for them. Mm -hmm. If it's not feeling true for them, that just means on the subconscious level, no, you're not. You don't believe it. Your brain kind of flicks away. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we have a number, probably 15 different things called balances. They're quick, easy ways that you might sit, cross your body, words that you might say. We do these balances. We come back and test that statement again. And if it's testing as a yes now, what that means is resistance to the goal being fulfilled has fallen away. It sounds really simple. It sounds like, what? You know, <laughs> how could that work? And tell you the truth. I mean, I thought that myself. Like, why does this work? Mm-hmm. All I know is the proof is in the pudding. And as a facilitator, I actually don't promise you any specific result. Right. I do promise you that there will be alignment. Uh, the other thing we're working with is whole brain function. Mm-hmm. So our brain has two halves, right brain, left brain. If they are out of sync, then it will be hard to move forward. So it might be, I want to lose weight. Oh, I'm scared to lose weight. We don't even think those things. But one side is, I want to, I want to. Oh, I don't want to, I don't want to. If I lose weight, it, I'll, everything will be great. If I lose weight, men will come on to me. There's so many things that can affect. Subconsciously. Yes. And then we beat ourselves up for that, which is crazy. And what's great about Psyche is you can really release that it's all your fault. Right. Really not all your fault. (laughs) Well, especially if your women are super high functioning and very successful, and there's this one area of their life that they can't find success for whatever subconscious reason, they're completely unaware of it. That is incredibly frustrating for them. So that I see myself as a high, like I'm a, I'm a quick starter. I'm an action taker. I'm highly functioning. And so when there's parts of my life that I can't move through on my own, no matter how much therapy I've done, you know, no matter other modalities I've tried, like I have not been able to move forward. Working with you has completely shifted like the ease that I feel around things that I used to wake up every single morning and think like how much I hated my body and you know, I've done a lot of therapy. I've done a lot of different work, but the modality of psych K, I, I literally don't think that anymore. I go into my closet. I put on my size 14 pants. I never think about, I wish I was a size 10 again. Cause you know what? When I was a size 10, I was wishing I was a size eight and a size six. <laughs> I have so much freedom now. And I know that I've done a lot of work to get here, but the release that psych K brought me beyond where I got to with my therapist and my, and my food and body love coach, like That was, I, I, there's no price that I could put on that. The release that it feels to wake up every day and not even question that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So happy. So happy. You know, we're happy to celebrate, right? (laughs) So let's talk about some of the outcomes you've seen with your people. 
Because I know a lot of people think like, oh, I don't need healing because I didn't have trauma in my life. But I've heard you tell stories of things that like were not traumatic that were holding people back. Yes. Well, let me just tell you for myself first. Yes. I don't feel like I had any major trauma in my childhood. I mean, the things I learn about people nowadays just break my heart. Like, and I don't even know how they turned out as good as they did. No. Oh my God. It's just, and I'm so so honored to be able to, to support these people. And when I turned 60, I started to have what, you know, everybody knows that little voice in your head and just Mm -hmm. or the shitty committee, (laughs) committee, whatever we call it. And uh, from the age of 60 until I found Psyche a couple of years ago, I just had this loud, nasty, woulda, shoulda, coulda conversation. Mm. Like if you, you know, I'd watch people on TV and I'd go, I could have been Oprah, I should have been her, you know, or, you know, just going like, and now you're so old, there's no way, you know, you couldn't do that. And it's one thing after the other. If you'd only done that, then this would be different. If you'd done that, maybe this wouldn't be happening blah, blah, blah. So I was operating on top of it. It wasn't stopping me. It wasn't keeping me in bed, but it wasn't making anything very fun. Right. And then when I felt like, hey, I was able to release that. It's never here anymore. It never comes back. It's not repeating. Like, I don't have that. In fact, I, I wonder at how present I am in my life now. Like, I, and my age means nothing to me. Like, it's just a number. And I'm going to keep creating whatever I'm creating, you know, and I'm just so present in my life. It's amazing. It's Um, like it dissolves. There's literally nothing easier than just something that's been yammering at you for your whole life to just dissolve away. And I love your point about the presence and the, like the, how much more open you can be in your life right now, because I, I do think about sometimes how much time and energy I wasted thinking like my weight specifically has been the thing that's been dogging me my whole life and how much time and energy I wasted on that and what I could have done if I had put that time and energy towards something else, but I don't even think about it anymore. It's just like, it is what it is and it's gone. So great. So great. Can you tell us a story about somebody who has like a little thing that wouldn't, would you were just like the the apple lady, I think is a great. Yeah. yeah. I was going to talk about the apple lady. I love that. I love this one. This woman came to me, she's about 54 years old, and both of her parents died in their 50s when she was in her late, early 20s. So she was especially worried about her health, given that she was that age. But what was what made her really worried is that she only eats junk food, literally. She eats coffee, cake, and soda for breakfast, for lunch, Ritz crackers for dinner. I, I'm surprised she's even healthy. Well, we kind of were digging back to the past, like, where do you think this started? And she figured out this time when her mother came late to pick her up for daycare, and the woman forced her to eat an entire tomato. I don't know if it was big or small, but it was traumatic in that sense for a little girl. And I guess her mother came in and was sort of gloating about it. Her mother was nasty, wasn't a nice Mm. And at that moment, she declared, I don't know if she said it out loud or to herself, that she would never, ever eat another fruit or vegetable in her life. So we did a particular balance related to that type of a thing. And she went off for a couple of weeks, came back to the session, and she said, you're not going to believe what happened. Oh, I forgot to tell you that whenever she was just around a fruit or a vegetable, her hands would sweat to, and her body would have anxiety. She goes, I can hold an apple and not sweat and not have any anxiety. I can read a menu. She used to read a menu and sweat. I can read a menu and not sweat. And don't ask me why, but I decided to give up soda and I don't even miss it. She was ecstatic. Well, then we went on to, she said, well, I I really need to get some closure with my parents passing away when I was in my early 20s. And my experience in my extended family is they don't pay any attention to me like I'm invisible. They're not interested in me. They don't talk to me. Mm -hmm. And she was going to a funeral that weekend. So we did some what we call relationship balances to get some closure with her parents. She went to the funeral. She sends me a message on Monday. I couldn't wait to tell you. The funeral was amazing. (laughs) I think that's a story. She said, 
everyone included me in every conversation. I've never had this experience before. She goes, I don't know how this works, but I don't care. Yes. The next session, I don't think we even even talked about this. No. She comes back and she says, here's what I need to work on. She says, my whole life, men have felt like they can cross the line with me. And not like they rape her, not Mm -hmm. that level, but they do things that are unacceptable. Like disrespectful? Disrespectful. They show her pictures they shouldn't show her. They whisper things in her ear that they shouldn't. And she happens to work a food truck now, which is by a construction zone. So she was talking about these men that do these things. And so we did our work around that. And I said, let's just see what happens. Again, can't guarantee what's going to happen when. Again, that Monday, she sends me this message. I can't believe it. The one man who always crosses the line, who's just the most obnoxious, all he's done this week is say hi. Hmm. And she didn't even like have to say, she didn't even have to have a hard conversation with him. There was just something within her that shifted. Right. That's right. amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> the stories that you tell about Psych K, the results that you get are incredible. And I I know how crazy it can sound to people. And, you know, but I, I feel like I've done enough work on understanding how powerful the subconscious is that I was really open to this. And I feel like people have to be open for this to potentially work for them. Is that is that a prerequisite for you? I mean, it's certainly very helpful. Mm -hmm. However, one woman was referred to me. I would not call her open. (laughs) Not that she was super close, okay? But I wouldn't call her open. Okay. She came because her brother's wife referred her to me. Mm -hmm. And after we did our first session, she was deciding to buy a package or not. And we kind of looked at how risk adverse she was. Mm-hmm. I looked at what she'd like to get in her life and she hated the job she was in and she'd like to have a better job, but she was scared to leave. And I just said, well, would buying a site K package be a risk for you? She said, yes. And I said, well, maybe that's your first step. Mm-hmm. Being less risk averse. Mm-hmm. You know, are you interested? So she bought a package. And as we're going along in her case, I, I was like, I don't know if this is making a difference or not. Well, then for whatever reason, we had a longer break than we should have. I think things came up in her life. And when we got back together, like maybe a month later, she had all this stuff to share. I quit my job. My friend is opening this. She's hiring me. It was like all this stuff was happening that she wanted to have happen. Amazing. I had one guy he wanted to, again, he wanted to lose weight. And we did eight sessions and we weren't, this is the other cool thing is I like things to happen very organically, Mm -hmm. not so people who want to lose weight, it's not about, okay, well, you have to do this and you have to do that. You have to do that. No, I want it to be that something opens up where you're drawn to something and it becomes an organic, natural thing that you want to do. So we're going along for eight sessions, working in different areas of his life and uh, he had, he was drawn to becoming vegan. Mm. And luckily his partner was a cook. So mm. he started eating vegan. Mainly he was working on not eating from 12 to three in the morning. <laughs> mm. But there was no like, okay, you have to, you've got to right. stop, right? And about six weeks in, he goes, I put these shorts on this morning. He wasn't weighing himself. And they were so loose, they were falling off. And I weighed myself and I've lost 15 pounds. Amazing. And since then, he, uh, he's he been drawn to this fat flush program that like I would never do this program. But he <laughs> loves it. And now he's like, he had this goal to be under 200 by the first of the year. And now he's there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so most people, even if I'm not seeing an immediate change, I'll see something later mm-hmm. that was right in line with what we worked on. Well, there's a couple of things I want to say about that. Sometimes we'll have a session and I'll go away and I don't really think about it over. That's the thing. Like I don't have to, there's no over efforting with psych K. Oh. And then I'll come back two weeks later, later for our next session. And you'll say, okay, well, last time we worked on this, how did that show up for you? And I'm like, oh, oh 
Nice. And then I, then I see all of that. And so thank God you take notes. right? And then I really wanted to share you with people because you're such a gift. The work that you do is a gift. The easefulness is a gift because we're all doing way too much. And like, you know, I'm a content creation specialist. Like um, um, what I do is doing. So I'm always looking for areas in my life where I can do less. And I just wanted to, sh- I don't think n- enough people know about this. And I really want to get it out there. And Patty gets people results. I hear her stories. I mean, I read her content all the time. So I hear these stories. And if you are looking for more ease and you, you're, but you're saying to yourself, well, I didn't have a traumatic childhood or I didn't have a traumatic, you know, event in my life. It doesn't matter. There's something, especially if you're a high performer, there's something that you're probably, that's probably dragging your ass around that I know Patty can help you with. Yes. Like I just did a session with a woman today, yesterday, or I don't know, last week. Who knows what day and, it is today? <laughs> and literally the only area of her life that she doesn't rate like a 10 is her relationship with money. And so that's all we're working on is clearing her money blocks and literally can see the anxiety. What did I say? I said something about being extravagant. I thought she would have a heart attack. She has money. Uh right and she's frugal and she saves but her relationship to money gives her anxiety all the time and the thought of being extravagant in any way like she has to buy discount uh just you can feel it like yes (laughs) and so how fun would it be if she got like completely freed up in the area yes so much ease the other thing i want to say before we wrap up and we've talked about how to connect with you you do this completely virtually. I know you used to do it in person, but then COVID hit. And so I I can personally vouch for this is very effective via Zoom. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my clients are all over the country. Yeah. Yeah. So how can people come into your world, Patty? They can go to my website, which is www.sagethink.com. That's Mm -hmm. S-A-G-E-T-H-I-N-K.com. They could email me, patty, P-A-T-T-I, at sagethink.com. Great. And I highly recommend getting on Patty's, into Patty's world and on her email list because she just always has these great stories and like you can just hear her kindness and the ease that's around her. So I highly recommend getting into her orbit. And I do offer my first session at no cost. So you're not really risking anything. And believe me, I'm not a high pressure salesperson at all. No, I can vouch for that. Test it out and get a feel for yourself what it's about. There's a link to click in my email and on my website to schedule a session. Yeah, there's literally nothing to lose except maybe the garbage that's been weighing you down. Yeah. I love Mm it. Patty, thank you so much for carving out time for this conversation and letting me share you with the world. I appreciate it. You're so welcome. (laughs) Bye, everyone. I hope that you go check out Patty and find some more ease in your life. That's what we're talking about all month. So go find yourself some ease. Bye, everybody. Bye.